James, last lesson of the week, and today we're gonna we're still with uh, linear graphs, but uh, uh, it's what I call funky linear graphs. Okay, uh, what do I mean? Okay, by the way, we're in page one forty five, exercise eight. So we have a lesson on linear graphs. We know that they're all, and here again, I'm confusing you a bit more. They all look like this: a x plus q. Okay, sometimes you see, sometimes m. I kind of do it in the little, in deliberately because I want you just to not get attached to these letters, okay? It doesn't matter if it's A or B or C or M or whatever it is. This one in front of the X means the radius. And this one, which is the plus or minus, is the, uh, the Y intercept. The Y intercept or the bar vertical shift, okay? What is funky uh, linear graphs? Well, funky linear graphs is where, like for this example, 4X minus 2Y equal 8. So it's not, it doesn't look like y equal ax plus q, okay? Uh, so instead of writing y equal ax plus q, I've got all kind of mixed maps, okay? So, right, I'm just reading from the question. I've got these two graphs, each one of them has their own function, okay? And they asked me to find the coordinates of a and b, okay? So the coordinates of b, a and b is basically x-intercept and the y-intercept for this graph, okay, so 4x minus 2y, for that funky linear graph. How would I find, now let's start with, let's start with a, how would I find the coordinate of a, okay, right, so when we're looking for coordinates of a, or any coordinate, we're looking for two numbers, the x and the y, okay, now, let's start with the easy one, okay? The y. What is the y at this x-intercept? Well, every x-intercept, anywhere along the x-axis, the y is always 0. So the coordinate is some kind of x where the y is 0. Okay? The y is definitely 0. How are we going to find that x? Tina said substitute y equals 0. So I'm going to say 4x minus 2 times 0, because I know the y is 0 here, equal 8. So 4x equal 8, x equal 2. So that's the answer, 2, 0. Okay? Now, for b, okay? What is 0 in b? x or the y? x is 0, so it's going to be 0, y. How am I going to find y? Substitute 0 for? Wait. So I'm going to write the same thing, but now x is 0, so it's going to be 4 times 0, minus 2y equal 8, okay, minus 2y equal 8, y equal minus 4, divided by minus 2. So again, here are the answers, okay? Now I'll just pause here for a second, I think it's a good idea you guys copy it. Now we're going to do the same thing to find the coordinates of c and d, okay? So just to make things a bit quicker. I'm just going to uh, go through it, okay? So at D, okay, we're doing the same thing, but now for x plus y equals minus 1. So at D, what is equal is the y. So the x I don't know, the y is 0. Okay? How would I know the y? Or how do I know the x? I will substitute 0 for y in this equation. Don't get confused. That was for this equation. This one is for this equation. So I'm going to write x plus 0 equal minus 1. In other words, x equal minus 1. Okay, so I can already put the coordinates, minus one. Okay, now we're looking at C. Okay, C, what is equal to zero? It's the X, so zero, Y. How are we going to find Y? We're going to substitute the zero for X in this equation. So zero plus Y equal minus one. Okay, and did I make something wrong here a little bit? No? Oh, yeah, okay. So y is also going to be minus 1. Okay? y is going to be minus 1. So that's it. That's it. Okay? Let's have a look at the next part. Okay. So now we want to find out the gradient. They ask us the gradient of 4x minus 2y. Now, we know that the gradient is what's before the x. But that's only when it's written k. Okay, the proper name for this is implicit. Okay? When I've got a function that is written like this, y equal ax plus q, we call it implicit. Okay? Right? When it's what I call funky, 
that is explicit. It means it's not very obvious, it's a bit funky. So how would I know what's the gradient? I want to turn it from the funky way to the proper normal way. Okay? How would I do that? How would I take this one and turn it to a normally looking function? How do I do that? That's an algorithm that I'm asking that. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve it. Solve it for y, not for x. Solve it for y. So we're going to move the 2y to one side and the a to the other side. So we're going to write 2y equal 4x minus 8. Are you happy with that? I move, I did plus 2y minus 8. We all right with this? Okay, but we're not there yet because I've got 2y. I want to have y equal. So what should I do now? What do I need to do? Divide by 2. So I'm going to write y equal, divide this whole thing by 2. So what will I get? So what is the gradient now? Two. Soon as you turn it from a funky way to a normal way, explicit way, then we get the gradients. Obviously, so nothing next to this. Okay. By the way, if I had just just thinking about it now, let's say I have y equal x plus three. What will be the gradient? One. Okay. Remember the skinny one. Okay. The Pelogi's skinny one. If there is no number next to it, it's that one skinny one. Before. Okay, right, let's move on to the next one. We want to, okay, I'll just pause for a second because I need to make space. Right, now finally, only in the rest, we need to find out this coordinate E. In words, tell me what's happening in E. What's special about E? The graph are crossing. The maths language, word for this, they intersect. They intersect. Okay? And that means that. For the same x, you'll get the same y. Okay? So I need to find the x value of these two graphs where you'll get the same y value, you need both of them. Now, the way to do it is like that. The first step, okay, you need to find the implicit, implicit formula. So write it, go move it from funky to normal kind of way. Right? So we've done already one. So we still need to do it for this one. Okay? So I'm gonna write. Well, I've written here x plus y equal minus 1. How I'm going to write it is y equal to something. Easy, isn't it? What do I need to do to this line? Keep the y in front. No, the one, minus 1 is... Uh, I want to keep y on its own. So leave the y there. I just want to get rid of the x, right? Okay? So what should I do? Okay, so I think the thing that gets people confused is that you guys are so used to solve for x okay, that you're trying immediately to get rid of the y. No, no, no. We want to keep it the y on its own. x move to the other side. So we're going to do minus x to get rid of that x. So we're going to have y equal minus x minus 1. But otherwise, just as an aside, what's the gradient of this graph? Minus 1. Minus 1. Okay. Great. Now, I've got these two equations, and they're not funky anymore, they're normal, normal ones, okay? How would I find the point of intersection? I want to hear what you guys think about it. I'll explain. Okay, so let's, you know, how do I find that point of intersection? First, if I did, I found the proper uh, implicit way, the, the normal, not the funky way of these functions. Now, what does this thing tell me? Tell me, look, if you know the x, the y is going to be equal to 2x minus 4. Give me x, I'll give you the y. This, that's for the black graph. For the green graph, you say, no, give me an x, I'll tell you what the y is. It's minus x minus 1. Obviously, they're in disagreement because it's two different graphs. But there's one x, for one x, one x value, they both agree. And that's here, coordinate e. Okay? So, if I say, okay, I want to know that x. For that specific x, these two will be the same. In other words, just for that x, for the intersection in E, the point of intersection, 2x minus 4, the y value that you read from the black graph, will be equal to minus x minus 1, the y value that you read from the green graph. Just here, they equal to each other. So now we do now we're solving for x. Okay? So we're gonna move, I'll move the x to this side, so plus x. I will get 3x minus 4 equal minus 1, plus 4, 3x equal 3, x equal 1. Okay, I'll just pause here and see if you guys are happy with that.
Now, if you remember, in the beginning of this uh, question, uh, we, I told you that for coordinates, we need always two numbers, the x and the y. So for now, okay, we've got the x value. We know that it is for e. I'll write it down, e. Okay, I don't need to. Okay, for e, the x is 1. How would I find the y value? So, in other words, all he said, substitute x equal 1. The question is in which function? You're right, both. It should be the same. You don't. You only really need to put it in 1. I will do it now both just to show you this, but you only need to do it in 1. So, let's just put it here. If I put x equal 1, minus 1, minus 1 is 1. Minus 1. I put 1 here. Minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2. Okay, minus 2. Let's just try here as well. We'll put 1 here. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. We've got the same thing. So it's a good idea if you have time to test it to make sure it's the same, but you don't have to. You just need to substitute in 1. So what does that mean? Okay. E is just the letter they gave, and they asked you to find out for that coordinate. So the coordinate of E is 1 minus 2. I'm just going to repeat the whole process of doing this, okay? Because it's quite, it's very new for you. So, to find the coordinate of the intersection, first of all, I'm going to make sure that both functions are proper, implicit, they're not funky anymore. Okay, so I've done it. Now, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to make them equal to each other. So, both y's have to be equal to each other, making it equal. I find the x, I substitute the x in one of the functions, doesn't matter, I get the y, voila. Okay, let's have a look what's next. Okay, uh, the last question they asked me the values of x for which the lines are increasing or decreasing. Now, that question usually asks in quadratic to think that change direction, but linear, they either go up or either go down. So let's just go one by one. For the black graph, is the y increasing or decreasing? Increasing. For the green, decreasing. And then there's no change. So, I, I, unless I misunderstand the question or they phrase it a little bit different, that's about it. Okay, I'll stop here and I'll come to you in a minute. Okay, uh, the second question that I'd like to go on is D. And I'm not going to go over it, I'll just give you the, the start. So, you're given two equations 3x minus y equal 4, 3x minus y equal 5. And we want to, we asked to draw these graphs. So, these are what we call, Mr. Vesham calls them, okay, you're not going to see the name textbook, these are funky linear equations, okay? We need to turn them into normal ones, okay? To be able to sketch them, okay? So, uh, when you turn into normal, if I do that, what I'll do is I'll do plus y to move them to the other side, minus 4 to move the 4 to the 3 x. So, that's going to be y equal 3 x minus 4. To turn this one to a normal equation, okay, I'm going to do plus y minus 5. So move the y to one side on its own. All the rest must be next to the x. So y will be equal to 2x minus 5. Now I've got two linear equations and I know how to draw them. Okay? You can just basically substitute. There's a bunch of things you can do. You know what the intercepts are. 1 to 6. Okay? This is that the intercept. 1 to 6. And if you want to draw one more point, just put a value of x. Okay? Any value could be 1. 0, or not 0, because 0 is always a y intercept, or 1, or 2, or minus 1, then you'll get to that uh, y coordinate, and then you draw the line between the two points. I'm sure you guys can handle it. See you next week.